Sorry, Greg, I don't mean to spam your group, my friend. I just want to give everybody a shot to watch because sometimes people don't get a chance to watch other people play. Okay, this is a great start to the... Uh, a great start to the stream, huh? Super interesting. All right. Awesome. Here we are. <clears throat> what we're going to do is we're going to play some... Uh, I'm gonna play some stuff. So, um, let's do. Let's do. Let's do this one first. I like it. Okay. All right. So again, <clears throat> my name's Owen. Welcome to all you Operating Ninety Nine fans out there. All of you TI Ninety Nine fans out there. Um, I did play one of my own Opry Soft games a little earlier, <clears throat> and um, I'll probably do that some more up, uh, in the future. But I don't think I have any more on my computer right now. They're all on older hard drives. So here we go man let's play some ti invaders so um those of you who are atari people or, or arcade people um you will recognize the aesthetic here however i personally believe that the uh, atari version <clears throat> is visually um inferior to this one and potentially even the arcade is visually inferior to this one this was a a beautiful version this is a beautiful version thank you I'm, i see you too i'm glad you're here awesome so we are streaming i enjoy that here we go let's play some ti invaders how about it no way it's bob from bob <laughs> okay so there's different strategies to use here but the tried and true strategy is to try to knock walls out as quickly as you can because one of the reasons you want to do that is that the group will have to travel further if there's fewer row or fewer columns. And this this UFO is unique to the TI invaders. Hey, what's up? That UFO right it's there. It's me. Hi, Buck. Hi. Buck is in the house. Where's your webcam? So yeah, so you want to uh, yeah the UFO is uh, shoot the bad guys. Depending on where you hit that UFO, it will give you different points. So I hit him on the far outside rim, so I only got fifty points that time last. Oh, I just died because I'm talking, right? Hi, Buck. It's me, BC. It is. It's BC up in here. Why am I here? Why are you here, BC? Ivan, that's a very good question. You asked me to be here. Uh, well, yeah. I thought perhaps you might want to play some games with me. P. Red assess. I'll be back. They start picking up in speed. And it's a very smooth transition here. I, I really like the, tri the the smoothness of the animation on this game. It's really cool. So here is the bonus stage where you hit the saucer and it bounces back. The idea is to hit it as many times as you can without letting it go off screen. It's trickier than it looks. Okay. We're going to do another column dance here. So the... Um, Oh man, <clears throat> I really want to show you guys the really cool designs of the monsters that the uh, aliens that they have in this. There's some really neat ones, um, but I'm playing like crap, so you may not get to see any of the really cool ones. Yeah, BC had a little too much coffee. Legit. Now, I'm not going to go for that UFO because I need to cut some columns down here. Hmm. All right. 
not messing with the UFO. It's tempting, but I'm not I'm not going there. Okay. So I believe I will get through this one, hopefully. <laughs> That was close. All right, let's see here. Oh, see, it's trickier than it looks. Okay, so these are the little wiggly guys. I don't know what you call them. They look kind of cute. I call them the wiggly guys. I believe after the wiggly guys are the worms, and those are kind of my favorite animation. And then there's the blinky eye guys. They're coming up at some point here too, so. dead. I mean, you're not even going to get to see the worms. All right. <clears throat> so, um, that is TI Invaders. It's a very cool game. Um, one of my, one of my favorites it takes you way back, it takes me way back to a good time. Now, some of you will, will recognize a, a game that looks similar to this one. This one is called Munch Man. I'm going to give you a quick uh, minute to guess what this game is going to be similar to. BC, you got anything? Pelians, <laughs> tragic events in history. Oh my God, where'd you guys come from? Where did you come from, BC? All right, we're gonna play Munch Man real quick. This is a really cool game. Yeah, you got it. You got it, B H I S F guy. <laughs> Munch Man is one of my favorites. Yellow Ball Guy. That's exactly right. Okay, I love this game. It's a lot of fun. It's it's sort of like Pac-Man in reverse, okay? It's sort of like Pac-Man in reverse. Because you're laying this chain, right? And you're not picking up dots, you're laying the chain. Uh, the concept is the same. The execution is relatively the same. Uh, but you have to... It, sometimes it's more difficult to to see where you still have yet to lay chain versus where you, seeing where dots still exist. So th this can be a little more challenging in some ways. Dead. Died. Pac-Man with Beyblades. For real. Alright, let's go guys. And there's some really cool uh, trivia with this game. Um, I can't recall it all right now, but there is some cool stuff. This game has a neat history. See, now I'm wondering where... Oh, I still have to go here. There we go. Okay, so that gets us to the next level. Okay, yes, I am ready. Let's do this. Now here you'll see that the enemies look different, and that's one of the features of this game versus Pac-Man, is it's not the same ghosts all the time, you have different antagonists for each level. So we're gonna try to chew up some of this ground here, chew up some of these bad guys here. Making good progress. Uh oh, they're about to they're about to respawn and they respawn right in my face. Right in my face. Alright, here we go. It would be it would be a Shakespearean tragedy if I failed to show you guys the third level in Munch Man. I would really feel bad about the type of human that I am if I can't get you to the third level of Munch Man. Oh, and you know what? That's what's going to happen. That's what's going to happen. You are not going to see the third level of Munch Man. Hey, thank you for subscribing. You guys are awesome. Um, I am not as cool as BC is. However, I did have a hand in teaching him his love for um, good video games. So, all right, let's see. What notes next here? What can we play next? So, um, some of y'all are on here now. You You haven't seen this game yet um, I played it a little bit the other day on the stream I don't want to do that again 
Um, I'll show you a cool game. Um, let's see, let's go to a user cartridge here and we're going to open a game. Let's see, that's a good one too. Um, let's go, let's go to this file. Yeah, that's, let's do that. Okay, so we're gonna play a game here real quick um, called, um, let's see. Well, I was gonna show you Donkey Kong. I could show you Donkey Kong. I'll show you the TI-99 version of Donkey Kong. It's very, it's very similar in some regards to the Atari version of Donkey Kong and the, um, uh, and the arcade version of Donkey Kong. However, the levels are slightly different. <clears throat> the gameplay and controls are slightly different. <clears throat> Excuse me. But it's beautiful and it's a lot of fun to play. And Donkey Kong, and you may think of Donkey Kong as Donkey Kong in whatever port, but honestly, they all have their own charms. The, the, even the, the Atari 2600 version has its own charm. Uh, it's not particularly well done, but it is charming in its own way. So, all right, let's see here. Donkey Kong, we're going to hit enter to start. And uh, how, guys, how is the level of my uh, game? Is the, is the audio for the game coming through at a decent level, or do I need to boost that a little bit? You let me know. Okay, so it looks very much like Donkey Kong looks. Uh, the, one of the interesting things on the TI-99 version, which is the version I'm playing right now, though, is um, when you're ascending the ladders, it's almost like it takes an extra pixel or two to get up the ladder. Uh, like when you get to the top, you're still not quite at the top, if that makes any sense. Um, and I just got died. I just got dead. Marcus of Marinus. You know, I should show Marcus of Marinus for real. Yeah, red jump man. Yep. He's very red. No matter how colorblind you want to be, this dude's red AF. Okay. Okay, thanks, BC. Appreciate it. Okay, so we are ascending Mount Donkey Kong here. Balls, that was way too close for comfort. Okay, so all we have to do for, for level one is to get up to the princess. Yeah. So, um, if you guys haven't played Donkey Kong recently or played it at all, this particular level here is challenging. Um, you have to sort of pull all these blocks. And you have to do so without getting killed by the fire guy. So there is a strategy to this, and if I was not quite as tired as I am right now, I would probably recall the strategy a little better. But for the time being, uh, we're going to do what we can to get through this level. Because level 3 is actually really cool, and I wanted to show it to you. Oh, that guy's coming there. That's not good. And the fire guys cannot um, traverse gaps. So if you can get them gapped off, um, this is going to be tough here. This is going to be tough. I need to get this gap. Yep, there we go. And then we'll get that. We'll kill some of these guys and get them out of our faces. Okay, good. So now we've 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 created our a little buffer zone for ourselves here. Um, okay, so we're good now. So now we've got three more. Oh, I just fell off the ledge to my death. Are you kidding me right now? Did you see that? Did you guys see that? Wasn't paying attention to what I was doing literally off to myself legit off to myself see that works out just fine right there okay so since these guys cannot traverse the gaps I will find a way to get over here to a better position 
This is not good. Mm. Let's see. I don't think I can touch Donkey Kong. I think if I touch Donkey Kong, I'll die. So, hmm. No. Okay, there we go. Look at that. That's it. You just got to grow some balls, man. Sometimes you just got to go for it. Sometimes you just got to go for it. Okay, now I just don't do the stupid thing like I did last time and fall off the edge. Boom. Yeah. Um, yeah, thanks for the comments, guys. Uh, oh, man, this jumps back. That's right. So TI only has two levels. It doesn't have the spring level. Whatever. Um, so this is Donkey Kong for the TI-99 4A. As you can see, it is a very capable port. Um, it does a good job. Um, it uh, it definitely holds its own um, with other ports. And um, I think it actually has its own little thing that I really like. So, um, yeah. Okay, so let's see here. So there's a Tetris. Okay. Is this is that what this is? This is Tetris. I don't know that I've ever played Tetris on the TI before. I've played TI Tris, which is different. All right, let's see here. So Tetris two. Here we go. All right, let's see. Uh, I again have not played this version, so I couldn't tell you. Um, I couldn't tell you. See the controls. Okay, so so what? I need to figure out how to switch the what button switches the oh whatever. some Tetris this is interesting it's not a bad it's not a bad port of this game um, I've not played this I'm surprised that I haven't played this it is the, the res it's hard to describe but the, um, the the response from the input controls is it's slightly um, slightly sluggish I guess but it still plays you know it's legit it's, it's not a it's good. It does good things. All right, let's see now. Hmm. I'm actually fairly impressed with this implementation. They do a really good job. I mean, let's see if I can get me a Tetris here. Let's see if it gives me anything special when I get a Tetris. Slightly anticlimactic, I have to say. <laughs> Moist critical. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Let's do it. Well, let's get another Tetris here. Boom. They're called Tetrids here on this one. Okay, interesting. Très intéressant. Let's see. Yo. So, yeah, so this is a... Uh, this is this is not your this is not the regular Tetris uh, version from the Nintendo or the Game Boy or whatever, whichever version you're most familiar with. I am probably most familiar with the Game Boy version because, well, and that in the NES version, I suppose. Um, specifically because um, as I um, grew up, I didn't really have a computer with Tetris on it, but I did have. 
um, a Game Boy and a Nintendo. So the cool thing about that was I got to play those games. And so you get real familiar with those controls and stuff. And you play other Tetris versions and they never quite feel right. This one feels good. It's it feels really good. It, it's not for me. It's not as good as the Nintendo um, or the or the Game Boy version. But I don't know what language this was written in. This could be like a like a um, like a user made game. You know, I don't I don't know who wrote this game. I guess I should probably find that out. But uh, the community for this computer system, this Texas Instruments, is very strong. That was stupid. Um, and the the game producing. Um, group is is very very strong there's still a lot of people making games for this including myself i haven't written one in a few years but one of my um one of my biggest passions and when i have the time to do it is to write video games for this old computer system and i played one earlier in a stream and i might play that one again just to show you guys because there's more people in the chat right now so thank you all for being here i'm very grateful for you guys showing up and hanging out uh <clears throat> Turmoil. Oh, what a great game. I would love to do Turmoil. I gotta find the cartridge for it though on I haven't I didn't prepare for it. I don't have it downloaded, but I can find it. I can find probably find it quick. I, I just go on Atari Age and download it real quick. We shouldn't take me much time. But um anyway, I'm kind of I'm, I can play Tetris all day. You guys don't want to watch me play Tetris all day. Uh, but I could seriously sit there and play it. It's it's uh, it's therapeutic for me playing Tetris. So, all right, let's see here. Let's open up another game. Let's see what else we got here. So I know of this game. I think I may have played it a few times. But this is a game that was made by a guy in 2017, I believe. His name's Rasmus Mouseguard. Yes, BC, I do have the cartridge, but I can't play the cartridge on stream because I don't have a TI hooked up to a capture card, unfortunately. So let's see here. Um, this is a game called Bouncy, all right? I hope this game works this time because I tried to run it a minute ago and it wouldn't work. That's weird. It's just weird that it's not working on this one particular game. Played a bunch of N64. My, what was your first Nintendo game? So I had the original Mario. Um, but before we had the Nintendo, we had an Atari 2600. When I was real young, the Nintendo was still an expensive console and we didn't have a ton of cash uh, free for buying stuff like that. So, um, but we did have... Um, we did have um, a Nintendo, and so I played Mario One, and then um, I remember very distinctly. I know we, ha you know, we all have memories from when we're young, but we we all remember certain things very vividly that maybe we, you know, uh, they, they just don't they don't seem like an event in life that you would have to remember so vividly. But you do, because for one reason or another, it impacts you as you're growing and it imprints on you something. I remember one of my first very vivid memories was going at the in the middle of the night with my dad on the day they released Super Mario Brothers 3. Um, I don't recall when that was, um, but I'm going to look it up real quick and I'll tell you the exact date that this happened and then we were we were up late because we wanted to be there for the release when Super Mario Brothers 3 came out now we were not wealthy people um, but my dad um, had saved some money up and uh, we were able to purchase this game and I think this game was like sixty dollars or something back then right Okay, October 23rd, 1988. Okay. I was six years old. I remember it. <clears throat> and I was so excited to get Mario 3. And we got there and we were one of the first ones through the door. And we got one of the first copies because back then you couldn't do reservations and there was no game downloads. You had to go to the store when it opened or when it released the game so that you could um, you could buy the copies before they sold out. That's That's how you got games back then. And with a game that's that new and that popular, it's, you wouldn't be able to rent it at Hollywood Video or Blockbuster Video because those games like that, they 
um, you know, it doesn't, <clears throat> it doesn't pay for the companies to rent those out. It costs them so much to, to bring them in. And then, you know, um, they're always, they're always sold out I mean, they're always rented out. So if they have, you know, five copies, they're going to be rented out right after it releases. So I guess about six months later, you start seeing them for rental. They were available and they weren't showing as empty. Um, but anyway, yeah, big fan, um, big fan that was one of my favorites from when I was a kid now some of the other games that I loved very much um, was a game called Faxanadu now I'm sure that the, the correct pronunciation is Fazanadu <clears throat> however <clears throat> excuse me um, I always called it Faxanadu as a kid so that's what I will continue to call it forever uh, that was a wonderful game uh, <clears throat> also Simon's Quest was the second Castlevania game now Castlevania 1 is obviously um, it's obviously insanely uh, good, um, but for me, uh, Castlevania Two: Simon's Quest was one of the was one of the ones. You know, that was it. Let's try this game out here real quick. <clears throat> Arcturus, okay. It's very loud. Okay, so we have almost like a three quarter, um, like a three-quarter angle shooter here, space shooter, which is an interesting take on the space shooter, which is usually vertical or horizontal. So this is kind of a kind of a different take on it. And this is just a high score game. I don't I don't I never played this game when I was younger. This is not one of the games that I played, so I have no uh, no need to continue that. That was very harsh on my ears. <laughs> um Probably just when my headphones are too loud, I guess. Okay. Well, let's see. Black Hole. I need to play the Black Hole. That's a good game. Um, that's another good game. There's so many good games here. Um, I guess I could play... <laughs> mm. I could play one of my original games that I wrote since you guys haven't seen it. You know what I'm saying? You guys want to see a game that I wrote? <clears throat> I, I streamed it earlier today, but I'll, I'll play. I'll play it once through. Um, I I have personally played Pokemon um, the the card game a couple of times back in the late '90s, early 2000s, uh, if I remember correctly. Um, but I haven't played it since then, and I and I very much do. <clears throat> I very much do like um, Yu-Gi-Oh. Uh, I know somebody had asked that a moment ago, and I do like Yu-Gi-Oh. My thing with Yu-Gi-Oh is that um, when I think about Yu-Gi-Oh, I always think about dual monsters, you know, and and that that's the that's the type of battle I expect, where um, you know you've got you've got some trap cards, you've got some magic slash spell cards, and then you've got your monsters, and the way that you frame them is is you know very important. But you don't have there's no first turn kills unless you pull all five cards of Exodia in the first hand, which is virtually impossible. Um, and now with all of these different archetypes and craziness that's going on in Yu-Gi-Oh, it's like I don't even recognize the game anymore. You know, for me. Um, Dual city and uh, dual monsters. That's that's as far as I go. After that, I just um, you know not not feeling it. Uh, I guess so. That isn't to say that it's not great, but that's how I feel about it. So uh, I'm going to since you guys want to see this, I'll go ahead and play. Um, I'll go ahead and play one of my games. Uh, now I'm going to warn you all: this is not a great game. <laughs> <laughs> but it, um, but it's my game, you know. It's one of mine. I, I've written 
I've written, I think, five games for the TI now. And one of them is Marcus of Marinus that I really want to show to you. I just don't know where to download it. Um, I wrote it and released it a long time ago. I have the physical copy on tape. So on, on this old system, you run it on cassette, right? Um, you load it off cassette or cartridge or disc. And I, when I sold this game, um, I sold it at the fair and a few other places as well. I sold it um, on cassette to be loaded in through a cassette player into the computer. Now, for some of you out there, that sounds foreign and alien, but um, but that's one way to distribute. Um, that's one way to distribute the. Uh... <laughs> yeah, I bish Balkan both of you. Jeez, bro. Yeah, my my son is very good. Yeah, you're right. Battle City, my apologies. Um uh yeah, he's very good at Yu-Gi-Oh and uh I I don't dare challenge him uh either on uh Master Duel, Duel Links or even in even in person. I don't really even have a deck of my own, but Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to play this game. Now, this is a game I wrote. It's called um it's called Writing for the Brand, okay? Uh, this is a game I wrote for a programming competition, so it was never a full polished game. I never quite got it dialed in perfectly, but <clears throat> it's a playable game. I like the aesthetics of it, and I wrote all the music for this game. So the the main theme, uh, the death theme, I wrote that, and then when you win the game, it has another little piece of music that's a theme there. So, um, so anyway... Um, when I play this, it's it's not that fascinating to watch, but I'm going to try to let you kind of see what my thoughts were when I was programming this. I had to create an AI uh, for a guy who's across the way from me. Now it's very rudimentary. It's not um, it's not what you would consider AI today, but um, but I had to create something so that he could battle me. So here we go. So the music that I've got uh, that I wrote in here, I had to code it all in by hand. Um, I will. <laughs> I would love to show you what that looks like uh, after I do this. I'll show you what it looks like to code your own music into into this programming language. So and to just code anything into this programming language. Yeah, for sure. Um, so I know that I had that as auto load. So why did that not auto load? Ah, uh, that's why. After this, we should like play chess. Someone in the chat recommended that. Copy. Yeah, we might do that, man. I'm absolutely down to. So RFTB will become disk one, and here we go. Okay, this is a game called Writing for the Brand, and when I wrote this game, I wrote it with my son, VC, as the hero of the game. Hey, what? Hang on a second. I'm going back down to join the call. <clears throat> you will see what I'm talking about. Okay, here is your title screen, okay? Um, as you can see, uh, we are somewhere in a desert, yeah? And uh, the name of the game is Writing for the Brand. Uh, press Enter to continue. So we're going to press Enter to continue here. That's what we're going to do. You are Buck McShane, a loyal cowboy who rides for the brand. A band of outlaws has murdered your foreman and stolen most of the herd. The law has placed a bounty on this ruthless band of criminals and you aim to collect. Armed only with an old navy pistol that jams and misfires regularly, you set out to bring justice to the west. Okay, so to start this game off we have to decide what level we want to fight at. Uh, if we are not skilled at this game we may want to start out as calling ourselves a pig farmer because a pig farmer is not expected to be great with a gun right um, a cow poke you know once you get to that status you, you better be able to be handy with handy with the steel if you know what i mean or in your keep warren g um and then the gunslinger uh, is the toughest level um so we're gonna start off as a pig farmer because i just want to complete the game so you guys can hear all the different musics um and then uh, it, it doesn't take long to beat the game if i'm um if I'm on my game, we shall see. Before I do this, I need to take a drink because my throat is getting dry. All right, so Buck McShane is about to battle.
Okay, so what you're seeing right now is me trying to kill this guy. His name is Walt Seaver, and you have to shoot these outlaws five times each. Once you shoot them five times each, you fight the next guy, okay? So Cat McCloud is the next guy, and his bounty is 500. He's worth 500 bucks. goes up next. Tuco's tough too. Yeah, Tuco. So when you're fighting these guys, they speed up each time each time through they speed up. And each next character in line is faster than the previous. So this outlaw's name is Whitey McSween. So, um, I think there's nine outlaws I have to kill in total. Um, this one's worth five grand, so... Gotta get this bounty, yo. Yeah. <laughs> Biggest battle of all time. <laughs> Oh, you're going to get me killed. <laughs> oh, man, I just got killed, see? Oh, man. I'm, I'm done. Dead. You can't come back from that comment. All right, so hold on a second now. Let's... I got to get back in the game because I want to show you the end of this game. Um, here we go. Colonel Mortimer is next. Colonel Mortimer. I got shot again. So this is Indio. Indio's tough. He's he's faster than the other ones. He's, he shoots a little more frequently. <clears throat> but honestly, they're <clears throat> they're basically all driven off the same AI engine, just with different variables for their speed and accuracy inputs and things like that. So it's the, driven by the same engine. It's a simple engine. It just has to be modified to create difficulty ramping. So here's Angel Eyes. Now Angel Eyes is tough, and you'll see why. Do you see Angel Eyes up there? If you look very carefully at where the sand meets the sky, you can see Angel Eyes' feet. And sometimes it'll poke out through the side or by the cactus. Angel Eyes is the same color as the sky, which is cyan. He's the second to last guy. He's the second to last boss. Um, the boss, the main boss, the guy that you have to kill to beat the game, is even more brutal than this, believe it or not, if that's even a possible thing. You will see in a moment, though, if I can ever kill this guy. 
Sergio Leone, the final boss. Here he is. So now you can't see this guy at all. He's completely invisible. He is colored and transparent. So the only thing that you can do to find him is to have learned from your previous battles with the other outlaws to understand their patterns and how they move. So I've already hit this guy three times because I'm prepared. There's four times. Yeah, you can't see this guy at all. Because he's transparent. You, It's all about understanding the angles that you have to hit to, in order to get the guy. Knowing where, watching where his bullets come from and then, and then making a determination and a question about a decision on where to shoot because he's going to be somewhere and sometimes like right now he's eluding me I only need to hit him one more time oh I got him <clears throat> all right so <clears throat> no feet so here's the thing um, this is the, when you win uh, this is the uh, this is the text that you get the reign of terror is over for the outlaw gang you have earned the respect of all your fellow cowboys and proven that it pays to ride for the brand. You have earned more than $60,000 in your quest and you can set off to buy your own ranch somewhere in Colorado. And here, here's the ending music. So I had to compose all of that, all of that music, and um, it's much harder than it sounds on this old system. So now I'm going to play you the death music. You've heard the the main theme, you've heard the the winning music. Now I'm going to play you the death music. So I'm only have I selected a gunslinger, so I can only die three times here. And I'm just going to intentionally take bullets if I can here. So you can hear the music that happens when you die. Here it is coming up. Get ready. There it is. You've been killed by the outlaws, and they now own the ranch and the brand for which you rode. They have taken your girl and all you loved in life. In death, you will never be remembered for any good deed. However... You do have one more chance to make it right. If you would like to try again, press enter. Wow, this is a <clears> sad <throat> story. Show them the code. The code. Let me see if I have it. I'll show you what it looks like. Let's see. Let me see if I can find this code right here real quick. Hold up. Um, let's open this with WordPad. Well, that's not what I wanted. Let's open it up with Notepad. That's also not what I wanted. I think I know why. It's in TI files format. Dang it. And I don't have a way to, in, to inspect it. I guess I could just find it real quick in the code. Let me see. Hold on, let me see if I can find this crap. So first let me... Yeah, here's what we'll do. Here's what we'll do. I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it figured out. I'm going to turn this into disk 2. Yes, here we go. Okay, so I'm going to show you what this code looks like. We are going to load a program from basic okay we're gonna do it we're gonna do it like this we're gonna do old disk two dot what's it called rmuso 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 and what this is no i can't do that why not how about this old disk Two dot rain mus. Okay, this is what it looks like. Um, this is what it looks like. You ready? This is what the code looks like that I had to write for that music to play.
Yeah, this is just one of the, the tunes, one of the pieces of the three. So if you want to hear what all of that junk right there sounds like, here's what it sounds like. We hit run. That's that one. Um, and then we'll do the wind music. Old disc two dot wind music. And then let's list that. So this is just that short little tiny piece at the very end. <clears throat> Here's what it looks like. This is just that tiny little itty bitty major key piece. Look at that. And I had to hand type all of that in, every single last bit of it. And here's what it looks like. Here's what it sounds like. So, that's why it takes so long to, pro <laughs> to program that stuff. So what I do is I take my guitar and I'll compose a piece with my guitar and then I will write down the notes that I need uh, on a piece of paper and then I'll go through with the uh, manual for the language and I will go through and uh, find every individual um, frequency number that I need to um, that I need to put in in order to facilitate the note that I'm looking for so I'm looking for uh, the key of A, for instance, there are a couple that have come to, to come to mind. 440 is an A, the frequency 440 is an A, and the frequency 880 is an A also. Um, so if you wanted to play, for instance, let's just we'll just do it in, in real time. So we'll just do this. Let's do call sound. Um, crap. We'll do 200, 440. One. So what this is is it's going to play the <clears throat> it's going to play the A note for 200 milliseconds at a volume of one. So I'm going to hit enter and it's going to play one tone. That's it. That's all it does. Um, if you want to in, if you want to increase the length, we can change that first number to 800, and then 440 being the frequency that we need, which is A, and then this should be four times longer than what we just did. So that's basically how you code that stuff. So when you look back at the listing, every single one of those is every single one of those is a is a a length, a duration, a frequency, and a volume for every tone that's in there. So that is where we are at. Um, I hope that I'm not boring you all too much with all this crap because, <clears throat> frankly, not a lot of people care about this stuff a whole lot. But if you're enjoying it, I am enjoying having you here. So thank you so much for hanging out. Um, grateful for you all very much. Um, uh, let's see. How about Hunt the Wumpus? So this is a game that used to scare my children um, when they would get close to the Wumpus. So we at night we would uh, <laughs> we would play this game, and um, all of my children at different ages would be frightened when they would get close to the Wumpus and thinking they were about to get killed. Right. Um, so we're going to play this game and it's, it's a game about, um, it's a game about f finding things in the dark, right? Um, you, you'll see what I mean when we get started, but basically it's a problem solving game similar to Minesweeper, maybe slightly different. Um, but this is a, a wonderful game and we're going to play it on, on easy mode first, just so you can get the kind of feel for it. And we're looking for a couple of things and I'll show you. So it's called Hunt the Wumpus. I, I think you'll get a kick out of this. It's it's one it's one of my favorite uh, games. And my memories with all of my children playing this game, and they gave them nightmares. And you know, nothing wrong with giving kids nightmares sometimes, as long as it's done with love. As long as it's done with love. All right, Hunt the Wumpus. So if that doesn't freak you out, I don't know what will. So this is a, it's a maze game, okay? And you start off and you're blind. You can only see what's right in front of you. And you can only remember what you have seen. Um, 
you can't see anything else outside of that. So you have to explore in order to figure out where you're at. Now there's things that will fight against you in this game. The Wumpus is hiding somewhere in this maze. And if you, um, if you stumble upon the Wumpus, if you stumble upon the Wumpus without realizing that he's there, he will eat you. Okay. Um, if there is a, there are pits in this too. So if you fall into a pit, you also will die. Okay. Um, and there are bats. And if you stumble upon a bat, sometimes they will pick you up and carry you to another part of the maze. It's potentially a part of the maze you've seen before. Potentially it's not. Sometimes they can even dump you into a pit or directly into the Wumpus. So that's where we're at. I'm going to show you an easy maze first, just so you can kind of get a feel for it. Um, when you think you have found the Wumpus, the idea is that you would be on an adjacent square or an adjacent position and you fire a weapon at him. You fire your arrow at the Wumpus. You have one arrow. That's all you have in this whole game. Once you fire that arrow, if you hit the Wumpus with the arrow, you win. If he is not where you thought he was and you waste your only arrow, then you die immediately because the Wumpus will come and get you and you have no way to defend yourself. Okay? Sound interesting enough? Sorry. The Kool-Aid calls. All right. Easy maze. We're going to do this uh, normal. You can do this blindfolded, but um, we're going to do it normal. Okay. This is a very, very simple looking screen, right? What do we do? We, we explore. So we'll move to the right, to the left, up and down. And the screen wraps... And what we're looking for is indications that um, that there is a something afoot, right? Um, if you see red, like you're supposed to think about blood, and that is an area that is at least close to the wampus. Okay, so look, we just we just crossed into that. That is a square that has two things in it. It has a red indication that a wampus is near, and it also has a bat. So if we go back into that, if we go back into that spot, that bat's going to pick us up and drop us off somewhere else, and we don't want to do that. Um, but I do know that there's no wampus down here. So you see the green. The green indicates that there's a pit nearby. So that pit could be either to the right, to the left, or down. That pit could literally be in any of those places. So I don't want to. I don't want to test that. There's other places I can go right now that are clear. So anytime you see like where it's, it's white like this, it's clear. Okay. There's another indication of a pit, but I know that since this one is clear, the one next to it cannot either be a pit or a wampus. So it's red, uh, meaning there's a wampus nearby within two squares. Okay. So there's clear there. We're clear there. And there's a bat. So I got to be careful about that bat. We're clear here. Look, so we're making up, we're doing good things. So, okay, so now here's here's our first indication of what we're looking at. As you can see, there are two green spaces there. So what we can infer from that is because to the north, there is a green space, which means it's adjacent to a pit. And there is one to the east, which is to the right-hand side. We know that the pit is going to be right right between those two. It's in that spot. It's in that spot right there. I know you, I don't have a pointer on this thing, but you'll, you can figure it out. Um, so yes, the pit is directly to the left of my guy here. So I'm not going to go into the pit. So what I have here now <clears throat> is I have uh, a red square, another red square here. So the thing is, when you see the red, that means you have two spaces before you're afraid. Now with green, it's only one space. The pits are adjacent to green squares. This one is two. So if I'm safe here, I know that I'll be safe one more up. So I'm safe there. I know that. But what else can, What else do I know at this point? Nothing. So I need to come back to a place where I can safely traverse through the maze to get to a spot where I can be more comfortable with where I'm at. Okay, so there's a pit. Okay, so you can see right now <clears throat> there's a pit directly to my right. But based on, upon the fact that there is green to my left and green up in that top right, that top left corner, that leads me to believe that there is a pit directly south of my guy right now so I don't want to go that way so it's a game of reason <clears throat> and it looks like as we're getting further along here okay good that's that's fortunate okay so now now I think we can make a decision okay 
I think we can make a decision here. So I think I know where the Wumpus is. And I think you should too. So if you're looking, um, there are two spaces from the bat over to the right and then a gap that we haven't explored yet. If you look at this, if you look at the space I'm standing on right now, the spot that wrapped around below is red and the spot I'm standing in now is red, which is two. So that leads me to believe that the Wumpus is one space south of me right now. Okay. Do you see how I reasoned that? So he's right below me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fire my arrow and if I'm right, we'll win. If I'm wrong, we lose. Now, this is where my kids would always get scared because when you fire this arrow, if you're wrong, the Wumpus eats your ass and it's not pleasant for anybody other than the Wumpus who I'm sure appreciates and enjoys it very much. But I'm going to shoot this arrow right now and we're going to see if we're right. Let's do it. Fire south and watch the magic. Yes. So then you get a tally board. The tally board shows me is ha I have I have one win. The Wumpus has no wins, and the pit has no wins. If the Wumpus eats me, he gets a tally on the tally board. If and so what I'll what I like to do when I play this game is I'll do I like I'm gonna play I'm gonna play ten games, and we'll see how it tallies out in the end, right? So now we're gonna show you. Um, we're gonna do let's push Q to reveal the map. So this is what the entire map looked like. Now if you remember, I said there was a pit. Right, right, right there on the on the bottom left, and there was one up there, two two squares over, and one up from that. And then the Wumpus is where I said he was going to be. So, um, so yeah, that's so that's where we're at. So what we're going to do is we're going to play the same again with the same options, but this time I'm going to intentionally lose because I want you to see what my children saw as they cried themselves to sleep every night in the darkness of the rural town we lived in, in Tennessee, away from all other civilization, only the Wumpus to keep you company in the dark, cold hours between 2 and 4 a.m. before the sun came out to vanquish the evil night. Here we go. I'm going to play this one fast and see if you can keep up with what I'm doing here. Bat got me. Drop me there, so that's good. Okay. So, I am feeling like... The Wumpus could be directly north of me here, which would leave him in the bottom. He could be. Um, but what I don't want to win. I want to lose this one. Because I want you to hear and see the pain and anguish that my children felt. And here we go. Don't breathe. Just fear the night. Oh, sweet one. How I love thee. Got that ass. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So as a little kid in the dark at night and you're and I and your dad standing over you like, hey, if you miss this shot, that Wumpus is going to get you. You know, and it's a big jump scare when you're a kid. And this was the um, this was the joy that I took as a parent. <laughs> It was not um <laughs> it was not fun for for my my kids, but it was fun as hell for me um <laughs> tunnels of doom man I don't know if I have time to do tunnels of doom though oh man, what a great game the first r p g I ever played I don't have time to do it tonight, and i really want to i really want to uh, oh you want to see a pit death yeah, let's show you a pit death that's a good call I'll show you a pit death. Thank you for recommending that. Pit 
pit death. Look at there. Yep. One, one, one. Now, this can get really ridiculous, too, because when you play it on the hard mode, there are much fewer chambers and a lot more um, tunnels. So the chambers are what give you the indication if you're safe or not. When you do the harder levels, it's just mostly tunnels. And where you get a red indicator in the bottom left of the screen may mean that the Wumpus is all the way on the right side of the screen because there's only two chambers between you and the Wumpus because there's so many tunnels. So that becomes very difficult. You know what I'm saying? So, anyway, I, I, um, <laughs> I, have, uh, I have fond memories of that game. Anyway, let's see if I can find you one more game here before I shut it down for the night. It, it's, it's been so much fun hanging out with you all. Thank you, for, uh, thank you for hanging out. Thank you for hanging out with me. It means a lot. Um, let's find another good game here. There's a lot of good games. I really wish I could get Neverlander to play, man. I just can't get it to play for some reason. What game is this? Oh, we already did Munch, man. Okay. And we'll go user. We'll do open. Let's see. Moon Patrol? Well, we could do Moon Patrol, I guess. It's not as fun. How about this one? Saber Wolf. All right. This is a beautiful game. Um, I love this game. I'm changing my mix in my headphones because I want to hear this music a little louder. So I've never beaten this game, but it is very beautiful. Hey, we got a power up. Cool. Hey, another one. Cool. I got a golden ring. Oh, snap. That lizard just jacked me up, yo. Treasure chest. Oh, there's a lake. Uh-oh, bad guys. Oh, I'm backwards. Everything's backwards now. All my controls are backwards. I'm poisoned or something. Oh no. Oh, that's hard to play. <laughs> it's hard to run your controls backwards. Holy crap. Dang, lobsters and stuff, huh? For real? Spiders? I don't, I don't even have any iframes, man. I don't even have any invincibility frames. I'm just jacked. Now I guess there was some iframes there. I would have wanted more, though. Just because I'm not good at the game. You know what I mean? But the idea is you go through and you collect these treasures in a specific order to traverse the different levels. And... That is the goal of the game. Without getting killed by spiders and whatever. Yeah, blue lobster. A. Okay. Interesting. So, alright. That's my TI stream for the night. Um, thank you all so much for hanging out. It's been a true pleasure. Um, I, I'm i going to try to do more of these streams. And it won't always be old computer stuff. There'll be some other things too. Um, I might try to do some... Figure out a way to capture some N64. We'll do some Mario Kart. <clears throat> BC and I are pretty both pretty, pretty uh, decent at Mario Kart. We can hold our own, so... Uh, we battle pretty hard at that game, and that'd be a lot of fun if we could stream. Um, if we could stream Mario Kart Made versus BC, that'd be a lot of fun. So um, he's 
don't tell him I said this, but uh, he's probably a little better than me at this point. But I just needs a, I need to, um, just need to get my game up, yo. Just got to get my game up. So thanks again. If you haven't subscribed yet, <clears throat> please do that so that you can get notifications on when I'm going to be streaming. If you want to come hang out with me, obviously, if you've stuck around with me this long, I don't annoy you that much. So please uh, do me a solid and share and subscribe and, you know, let's start a little community here so we can get to know each other better and enjoy cool things. So, yeah, I know you're in chat, Buck. I was, I was literally joking that's the whole point of why I said that because I know you just commented blue lobster <laughs> bruh <laughs> if you like the stream please consider subscribing it's completely free and you can always change your mind later oh my god I'm losing it <laughs> there's a wumpus behind you yo that was a wumpus for real <laughs> hey you want to see something cool check this out that hat's hand painted. <clears throat> we did that at a uh, at a uh, shop down in Milwaukee. You could um, go in and paint these uh, anything you want to paint. They have all kinds of different statues and stuff there. So that's what I chose to paint. Anyway, appreciate all of you. You guys have. <laughs> I can't I can't handle y'all's humor, man. Y'all are too y'all are too funny. Y'all are too funny. I'm too 